I'm going to find I x x and I y y. So this plate has its own <coughs> neutral axis through the middle, it's a rectangle. <coughs> and this I beam also has its own neutral axis. When you add them both together, when we work out what the overall I values are for the compound, you'll find that there's, it'll, it'll be round about here. So that will be our Z, Z. <coughs> but yeah, from the tables, we can find out that the, the area is 2840 millimetres squared. So you'll find that every, every company has the area in centimetres, you have to change the millimetres all the time. IXX is from the table. First, well, first you've gone to the tables to try and get the um, all the information that you can get. You've got all the dimensions. In order to work out the, the second moment of area of these shapes about that location ZZ, you have to find that location ZZ. So, two, so it's, it's center of gravity to find location ZZ. What we'll do, we'll take moments. About the bottom, we'll call that A A. So at the very bottom here, A A A. I'm from Newcastle and I play the guitar. And when I'm trying to tell people chords, I've got A and E and and all these different chords. But my problem is, is that A and E. Or oh, eh and ah all sound the same, but yeah, I'm working on it, so please bear with me. <laughs> That's not part of this lesson, just ignore all that. Don't have to learn the guitar, though I do give lessons. No, no, I don't. Did we have a formula for centre of gravity? Don't know, do we, do we have it in the handout? I can't remember. Back page. Yeah, it's the it's the bottom it's the bottom right hand side formula. <coughs> so if we take moments around the bottom, what we have is that we're going to end up with this distance distance here. We'll call that we'll call that x bar. So if we did, if looking at the formula, we've got x bar multiplied by the area of the universal beam plus the plate. So that's them both added together. And that equals the distance from the bottom to the centre of the plate. So we'll call that D 
distance D and we've got PL for plate. D PL times by the area of the plate plus then you've got from the, the, the bottom to the position of the neutral axis for the universal beam. So we've got distance to the universal beam times by the area of the universal beam. So it, my drawing is quite small, but it's that distance in there. That's the distance to the universal beam. And we rearrange that so that we have X bar. So this again is just going through center of gravity. So the distance to the middle of the plate is 18 divided by 2, so that's 9, times by the area of the plate. The plate is it's 150 by 18. Plus the distance to the universal universal beam. So it's 254, um, the height of the, uh, of the beam. So it's half of that plus 18, which gives us 145 times by the area of the universal beam, which is from the tables, that's 2840. All divided by the area of the universal beam plus the area of the plate. 150 times by 18 plus 2840. That gives us 79 millimeters. From the bottom. I don't know um, what people do in terms of um, how they show their twos and their sevens and their zs. Some companies ask you to put a line through a seven and a z, so it can distinguish in between what is a two and what is a seven and what is a, a z. Some people's ones look like twos. Just make sure it's um, it's clear what you're what you're putting in. Right, so now we'll do the we'll do the second moment of area. So that's back to today's topic. Now that we know the position of the center of gravity for the compound beam. If we called the the universal beam, if we call that if we call that one shape one, 
and if we call the plate shape two, when we come to apply the formula When we come to apply the, um, the, the parallel of the principal axis formula, we need to know this h. h is the distance from the overall neutral axis, zz, to the neutral axis of the individual shapes. So you need to know the distance from zz down to the middle of shape 2. So we'll call that H2, that's H2. We also need to know the distance of the compound to the neutral axis location, which is H1. H1 is the, is the, you've got the, the neutral axis position, which is in the middle of the beam, sorry, and the distance to Z, which is a little bit lower. You work this out with dimensions of the um, of the of the compound section. H one is sixty six millimeters. That's um, just double check. Universal beam. That's how I've um, worked out that. <laughs> And then um, H2, if you look at the dimensions, it's 70 millimetres. That's 79 to the way 9. So please have a look at the dimensions and double check that you can see how we get the distances from ZZ to the middle of each of the items. So the I, X, X of the compound girder. Girder is another name for beam. That equals the second lump of area of the universal beam. <coughs> plus the second moment of area of the plate. <coughs> so just putting the, the principle of parallax axis into, into there. So we need the I of the universal beam plus the area of the universal beam times by H1 plus the same for the plate. And I'll put all the values in and we'll for our answer. So you should, when you get your I value from the table, your area from the table, your H1, we've worked out, you've got the area of the plate, <coughs> yeah, you, you can get your I value of the plate, and um, that's right, thanks. And um, the H's are, are squared, so we've got 28.67 times 10 to the 6, <coughs> 
puss in that area. That's the universal beam for the plate. Brady cubed over 12. So I'll put this back up again. So just to summarize what we've done. We've got a universal beam and a plate. We're adding them both together. In order to do that, to work out the compound beam or the compound girder, you need to find the position of the neutral axis first so that you can then start doing the second moment of area. So what I've done, I've just gathered the information from the tables for the, the, um, the eye beam. And you, you can also sort of put, you can put your information together also for the plate if you wanted to you know. You could do your 150 by 18 for the area. And you could work out BD cubed over 12 for that rectangle. So we found the, um, the location of ZZ. And in order to do that, we can then work out the distances from the overall compound to the center of the I beam and the distance from there to the center of the rectangle. And we're doing that so we can work, we can work out the second moment of area. Yeah, so we've worked out those distances to the, to the neutral axis locations. The segment area of the whole shape is the universal beam plus the plate. So we've got the parallaxis for the beam, parallel axis for the, for the plate. Put all the values in. Hopefully, you'll end up with this answer right at the end. And then just quickly, I, Y, Y. where you've got IYY of the universal beam plus IYY of the plate. We are given in the table what, what IYY is, it's 1.2 times 10 to the 6 millimetres to the 4 and plus the plate, and if we use, for the plate, we'll use BD cubes over 12. So just taking the dimensions, 18 times by 150 cubed over 12. Much easier.